Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's go ahead right now and implement our hybrid role-based authorization mechanism, but on the client side. You have seen in the previous video how we implemented this through using a um, custom middleware, but on the client side, you know, we don't have those middlewares, so there is another mechanism. So basically, let's go to the program.cs and see what we have here. So here, if you look at this, we have the service add Microsoft MSAL or like Microsoft uh, authentication library, which is basically responsible for all the authentication stuff that's related to communicating with the Azure Active Directory P2C, retrieving the token, initializing the user, and so on. And you know that the role claim, which is like our the core of the role-based authentication authorization, is not there because you know Azure Active Directory is, there is nothing responsible for the roles right now. So the roles are happening from our side using the database and the user profiles table and this org is organizer is organizer basically so the good thing is msal authentication provides us with something called the uh, uh, account claims the principal factory and this one will allows us to manipulate the claims after the token will be fetched from the active directory and then and the user created then we can add our claim so let's explain it here a little bit but before we go ahead and proceed with that so let's see that again this is the active directory and this is our blazor app so you know that the blazor request a login and this one retrieves the token so let's see this is the process of the authentication from here to here and in the way like until here we have the token and we have the user out of the claims available here. Then the set of uh, accounts or account claims principal factory comes to the play. If you have multiple, they will be registered in the MSAL and then before like the final uh, operation and returning that user back to the Blazor app, it's going to call all the claims factories available and complete the construction of the user and at the end okay it will give that user and return it back to the app so this is how the process is going to be so right now let's go ahead and implement that in action so you are going to understand it better so to get started first i'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder i will call it infrastructure cool and within this infrastructure let me create a class and this class, I will call it Azure um, Add B2C Factory or User Factory. Okay, the name is not pursued me so much, but yeah, okay. So right now we have to inherit from account claims principal factory just like this so basically this class is already existing in the WebAssembly authentication and it takes the type of the account as a parameter and the type of account is remote user account so basically what is this remote user account it's a very simple class if you go for it you are going to see a dictionary and basically this is a library that built in into Blazor or this is a class that built into Blazor that's being used right now by the MSAL to let's say translate the claims available into the user so put them in, into this dictionary so this is the type being used right now maybe if you are dealing with Azure Active Directory P2P and there is roles and groups we're going to talk about this in a, in a later video or another course sorry uh, maybe we are going to inherit from this and have some pro properties like roles or groups and so on but by default this is the one that's being used by the MSAL to uh, like initialize the user the user object from the claims available in the token right now we will going to create the constructor and basically this one has a constructor that as you can see it takes an object of type i access token provider accessor and this one is being injected or registered by default by the msal so i can access token provider accessor so this one is responsible for fetching the token, token provider accessor, just like this. And I can pass it to the parent. Okay. 
this service is registered behind the scenes by the MCL. And what I need for me, this one, is read only I HTTP client factory. HTTP client factory. And why I need this? Because basically, I need to create an instance of this HTTP client that's called ticketsbasket.api and can do this through the tickets basket through the HTTP client factory instance and I call the create client tic ticketsbasket.api. So mm -hmm. and that's perfect. HTTP client factory, HTTP client factory, and that's it. So, okay, that's great. Right now, let's go ahead and manipulate the user, as we have said. So I'm going to override a, a class a method called the create user async, basically. Okay, and as you can see, this one uh, takes a remote user account as an, like, and remote authentication user options as the parameters, and... I'm not interested in all of this. So the base implementation for this one in the account claims the principal factory and shall add the user out of the token. So here, if I call the create user async, I'm gonna put the response in initialize user. So basically this one is the claims the principal and I have the user, the identity and the claims available from the, you know, the initial user that created by the tokens received from the B2C. And at the end, I'm going to return this user. Okay, that's great. Now, what we want to do is to check if the initial user is logged in or is authenticated, just like this. Then if it's authenticated, what I have to do is to go to the API, fetch, call this endpoint, user profile slash, just user profile slash, and user profile, that, this will, will, will retrieve back to the client the operation response of type user profile detail, which contains is organizer or not. And based on this, we are going to get the role and then add it to this initial user as a claim. So to do so, first, before I do this, let me user identity, initial user dot identity. And I'm going to translate this or cast this into claims identity. Why I'm doing this? Just because that like variable of this type contains a function called add claim that allows me to add a claim for this identity. And because you know this is a reference type, so accessing the identity from the initial user or from the user identity over here, whenever you add the claim, it's going to be added because both have reference for the same object. So I have the user identity right now, and what I need to do right now is to create an HTTP client HTTP client factory dot create client and it's called tickets basket dot API. Okay, this will give me an HTTP client instance of this that will responsible for communicating with the backend that we have and get the access token automatically, uh, set it in the header and so on. We have talked about this in the, the beginning of this course. So right now, let me make a request this dot get from JSON async. Okay. What is the type I'm expecting? It's operation response of type user profile detail. User profile detail. And okay, I cannot find them because I need to add reference for the shared project. Okay. Click on shared. Okay. Now use tickets basket dot share dot responses and dot models that's great okay ah okay like this then the endpoint is slash api slash user profiles that's it this one is responsible for retrieving that so this response is of type operation response user profile detail so i'm gonna check if response dot the success if not, then okay, just do nothing. But if it's success, simply user identity dot add claim. So you see, this is why I casted the identity object here because it's of type I identity to claims identity because this one had this method that's add claim. 
and the claim is a new claim okay claim types dot role this is the type of the claim and the value is the role name so string role equals response dot record uh, come on response dot record that is organizer you see just like what we have done on the server and it's organizer other than that it's just a user and that's it so look at that this is very simple this is the full process and i don't have to do anything to set it for initial user because like you know i've, I've just talked about that that user identity and initial user dot identity both like reference the same object so if you add the claim here or here or whatever like they are both going to <coughs> they are in the memory referencing for the same object. So this claim will be added for the one object being referenced by this variable or by this variable. So this is great. Right now, this is everything we have to do. But the last step is to go for program.cs and register this Azure Active Directory user factory. And to do so, I'm going to call an extension method here called add account claims the principal factory. And its type is Azure add P2C user factory. add to the infrastructure and look at that that's it so basically i like this idea it's 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 a genius one to give you the flexibility for manipulating the claims in this way it's it's very very genius and as i've said you can add like uh, multiple of those like if you are doing many things but this one is great now another thing that we have to do okay we have set the role uh maybe sometimes if you didn't call this one like if you didn't use this name or you use something else like you you simply just use the name called role and you need to tell the MCL library that hey the role claim that you are going to build the authorization on top is like called just role not the full scheme name so as you can see here and to define what is the name or to tell what the MCL you can use here options dot user options dot role claim so this, you can instruct the MCL to identify the role based on the, that claim and you can tell it the name of the claim here. So it's claim types. This one is the standard one, but I just would like to show you this so you can know that, hey, there is something like this called, I can identify the type of the claim for the role from options.useroptions.roleclaim the claim types the troll so that's it it's it's very simple like in case you didn't get the idea 100% of what we have done you can post your question in the comments below and I of course I'm I'm gonna reply for that as soon as possible so right now let's go ahead and test this to make sure that it's working fine I'll go to index the tracer and I will add an authorized view sorry authorized view just like this and here I will add if context dot user dot is in role we have this famous function organizer which is three welcome awesome organizer else welcome great user just like this so if this work then we should see right now if we go to the database we should see that welcome user because I have set the role for user. So let's wait a little bit until the project run is running and to see if this one is going to work. Hopefully. Okay, now let's go and click on login. Okay, okay, software ninety eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, the token has been retrieved. Now it will try to fetch the user profile detail. Oh, and here we go. Look at that. We have get welcome great user because the process of the authentication right now is two parts. The first part is fetching the token from the P2C and then calling Azure Active Directory P2C user factory that we have created and based on that we have right now another claim 
just like what we have seen on the server called role and contain the role of the user. So to make sure that this one is working, let me show you that even with its organizer. Okay, right now it became an organizer. I will click on logout. Perfect. Let's go to home and click on login again. Wait a little bit and look at that. Welcome, awesome organizer. And that's perfect. Right now we already have a perfect authentication mechanism with Azure Active Directory P2C. And right now we have role-based authorization, which is hybrid as I've said. But anyway, we have discovered some advanced cool topics in Blazor, client side and server side, also in the API, how we use middlewares for manipulating the identity of the user and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this. And right now we can build more and more on top of this. And uh, in the next video, we are going to continue the journey of this awesome big API. Hopefully you are getting the benefits out of all what we are doing. But right now we have passed another stage and let's move for another thing. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button to support for more and more. And see you.